What's up, what's up, what's up? Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Back to Classics, the cinematic movie podcast that takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago, right here on iHeartRadio. I am your guy, Jay Alonzo. You can find me on all the social media sites simply at I am Jay Alonzo. That's Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, uh, Twitter. You talk to me, I'll talk back. The Back to the Classics Instagram page is up and running. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my shit just went blank out of nowhere. Uh, at BTTC Podcast, go ahead and jump on there, follow your guys, and we can uh, go ahead and hit you with these uh, these movie news, and of course let you know when the next show is coming up. And uh, don't forget to follow all the podcasts uh, at uh, www.beatnetworkonline.com, get you links to all the good shows. And uh, this is a special episode today. I think that the, the, this episode has been earned because we are experiencing something that nobody thought would reach this level. And... The best way to celebrate this this special moment in Black History on Black History Month, <laughs> uh, I got I got my family here with me. The boys from the noise makes some noise for. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah don't take. <laughs> makes some noise for my brothers Hollywood Kev and Big Los. Yeah, yeah. Eat. Hustle gang. Yeah, hustles was happening. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Shit. Just chilling. I just got off of work. I'm tired. Doing hood rat stuff with my friends. Hood rat stuff with your friends, man. I mean, <laughs> I think this. You remember that little kid? Yeah, I do. I'm mean, just doing hood rat things with my friends. I want to do hood rat Smoking stuff with Smoking wits. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we are gathered here today because we we are in the middle of uh, an explosion of surprises that we just didn't even see coming. We saw we 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 felt success was coming. I seen it. But I seen it. You seen this. I seen this. Wow. One of y'all actually called it the Me. last time was it you? <laughs> yeah. The last time we was doing the show. I, I think, said it's yeah, gonna beat out, I said it's gonna beat out everybody. Well, yeah. Well we I think we did the numbers. I think I I, I think I said one fifty, one sixty. I don't remember that much. I don't think we didn't go into I don't think we went into numbers. numbers. I don't think we did numbers. I did numbers with somebody, but I know like my original prediction was 160. Only thing we add, only thing that, first of all, introduce what we're talking about and we'll get back to this. <laughs> well, uh, okay, to introduce what we're talking <laughs> about. Uh, Black Panther dropped uh, last Friday, officially last Thursday with the pre-screenings. Um, and it has been a huge, huge impact on on Hollywood, on black culture, on just the, the movie going experience. And this is a Marvel movie that stand on its own. I mean, out of all the Marvel movies, we don't see there's no real connection to other movies. As far as what? As far as like, you know, how m- most Marvel movies have like, all right, well, he's in this person, this character's in this movie to tie into the next movie or whatever. There's no Thanos in there. There's no. I get what you're saying. Nothing else. It's, it's, it's merely just a Black Panther movie. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So. As of today, we're doing this, today's well, today's Wednesday. So, so as of today, the movie grossed two hundred and sixty three million dollars domestically. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Insane, right? And it really started off from when um, I, I think I think the initial craze kicked off after the premiere. The trailer set people off. They were down like, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing right, this shit. Right. But nobody really knew as far as. People on the inside, or even genuine fans of the of the, of the comic, nobody knew that. Or, or, or correction, nobody nobody can be as sure what Marvel was going to do or allow Ryan Coogler to do with this movie. So come come the premiere, and at the time, I think you couldn't you couldn't uh, give a, a full review because they're still under embargo. But you can, you can't do a social media reaction, mm-hmm. right? And Twitter. Was on fucking fire that night. I made sure I stayed off of Twitter because I ain't want. No, I, I knew I was going the next day that Friday, and I was like, I don't want no spoilers. I don't want shit. I, well, yeah, there wasn't gonna be any spoilers on get, my timeline. There would have been spoilers. I'm niggas ignorant. That's crazy. But, but I, you I, know what though? Uh, just kind of touch on that. First, not even first of all. Overall, good job, black people. Because yeah, by now, yeah. somebody would have either been put the movie online, or they would have been sharing random memes, like clips from the movie. From, yeah, like remember when uh, the Last Jedi came out, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, "Wait, so is Luke in it, or is he not in it?" And then everybody was sharing a meme with Luke in it, like we just fucked that up. So, right. <laughs> I don't know. The, the only memes I've seen have came from the trailer. Right. Yes. Exactly. Right. right. So, so, so it's weird being on this mic. <laughs> so, so 
We've all seen it. I've seen it twice. You've seen it how many times? I just seen it once. I'm, I'm gonna go see it. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this weekend. I'm gonna take the kids to go see it. Yeah. Um. I t- I took my mom and my daughter to go see it, but uh, the Thursday night show, me and Los caught it. Mm-hmm. And as you're headed to the theater, and I'm sure we share the same sentiment with everybody, you begin to build this sense of excitement because you've been, you we've waited months for this movie to come. And now it's finally here, and like I, I, I got my tickets in hand. You know what I'm saying? And we're we're, we're here to go. And we're, we're, we're gonna see what happens here. And what we get is nothing shy of just incredibly special. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's funny you said when you were talking about excitement. When we got to the movie theater that that Friday, I was like. I show I was excited. I was like, no, it's just a regular movie. I was like, I don't want to be upset if this does not pan out right. I think I got excited. Well, yeah, I got excited then when um one of the this, the shit like the first scene, one of the first scenes um in Oakland. Yeah, no, not not even not. It's not the first scene. Not this scene in Oakland. I got excited when uh Killmonger was in the museum. Right. When shit went left, I was like, in I, I huh. I said in Oakland. No, I, I mean, no, no. Uh, Killmonger first appears. Uh, uh, in, in they're London. in London. They're in London. They're in London. Oh, well, no. Right, technically, right. he does first appear in, in Oakland. As a child, we just don't know that's him. Right. Um. But no. When when shit went left with the um at the museum, I I I said it out loud. I was talking to my chick, but I said it out loud. I was like, "Oh, he with the shits," and that's when I got excited. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> niggas is with the shits. Let's go." By the way, Santa folks, uh, I, sh- I should have mentioned it earlier. This is a spoiler heavy. Episode today, so if you haven't seen Black Panther at turn, this turn, point, yeah, just turn it, it off and come yeah. back around when you've seen the movie because we're gonna talk about it as if we just left the movie theater. This movie has has left that big of a of an impact on just people, and, and and you realize it's not just black people. I mean, it's you know black people are are, are truly celebrating, but it's people. Yeah, most I had a conversation with a guy the other day, and he's one of those. Conspiracy theorists, you know, he feels like because Black Panther getting so much shine right now, so it's gonna be a crazy like mass shooting at a theater or some crazy shit like that. But it's been the complete opposite. You've seen, first of all, you got black people wearing African garb, <laughs> dashiki out. You know what I'm saying? Little kids wearing Black Panther costumes, which I thought was a, a beautiful thing because we've never seen uh, a superhero on screen at that age that looked like us. Right. Oh, real quick, just for uh, the colonizers out there. Hey, that's what I'm calling them from now on. Everybody. And I'm barking at them. Uh, <laughs> we we barking at y'all talking <laughs> shit about us coming in our full African garb. Y'all have seen the memes. Y'all have seen the post. People don't say shit when y'all be dressed up as Princess Leia as 45-year-old and men. Luke and all that. Nobody <laughs> says that. Nobody say shit when niggas is dressed like Harry Potters and, and walking around wizarding. As 45-year-old it's, men. It's, it was grown people that said acceptance letters to a fictional school. Mm-hmm. So if you got something to say about this, eat a dick. Y'all had a memorial. Now, granted, you know, may she rest in peace, but y'all had a memorial for Princess Leia where y'all put fake lightsabers in the air. No one needs to worry about us taking this ser- taking it this serious. We're going to a movie that's based in Africa, whether Wakanda's real or not. We're going to a movie that's based in Africa. The right. roots are in Africa. The scenes are in Africa. <laughs> yeah. The style is African. Mm-hmm. This is us dressed up as Harry Potter. So y'all need to just, you know, relax. Pipe let, down. Let us bit. have our moment. Eat a dick. Yeah. Then you can eat a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Now to speak on Wakanda. Um, let's let's let's. Why don't we? Why don't we just break it down from the beginning? From the beginning. Go from the beginning. Wait, can we go all the way back to the beginning? That's what I mean. Like, oh, I, like no, no, in I'm, Oakland. I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not even talking about the movie. I'm talking about when we first had this conversation when I was saying that I saw this. Yeah, we can start coming. there. We can start there. Like, a- right. like after the trailer debuted. Yeah, when we had the conversation the first time around. Right. The only reason I saw it coming is because of the response he got in his Avengers. Civil War? Yeah, in oh, yeah. Civil War. Because think about it. Our theater lit up when uh, Chadwick Boseman came on the screen. And then I forgot who we spoke to. I'm speaking to you, Jay, because people can't see us. I forgot, I forgot who we spoke to. They were like, yeah, as soon as uh, Black Panther came on the screen, everybody was like, yeah. And we thought they were talking about when he got suited up. They was like, no, nah, as soon as he came on screen, his father was like, boom, Black Panther's in it. Right. There was excitement from Infinity War, I'm sorry, from Civil War already. Yeah. So then you look at the, and this is about to get super black. You look at the strength of how we got Obama in the office twice. Mm-hmm. Black people may not come out for everything, but when we come out, we show the fuck out. True. Yeah. So Very true. we were going to flock to the movies in numbers, even if you were a Marvel fan or not. You see the numbers are coming in, 
and it's breaking records every fucking day, mm-hmm. that's the black dollar. That's us pushing on top of the millions upon millions of Marvel fans. Now, to, to go with what you're saying, um, and using Obama as the first major black thing, if you will, mm-hmm. I hope black people now can see that we do got some power. Right. I, exactly. That's my exact point. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I really hope they be like, you know what? We can we can make a change. But what's really irking my soul is that you have black people out there making it seem like we're all selling now because, yeah, the movie made what it made, but that, the white man gets that. I said, but, but what you're missing in this whole equation, once again, I love Blade. Blade is a great movie. Two and three, huh? We can talk about it. But as far as like seeing us being represented in a superhero fashion, there's a meme that you probably seen on Facebook around the time of gearing up for, for the movie came out, and the meme said, "We're going, we're happy, we're excited to see Black Panther because we're tired of seeing us being portrayed as gangsters, drug, yeah, yeah, I drug seen addicts, that, I seen that meme. I know what you're talking confrontational, about. Confrontational, <laughs> retarded, whatever the case may be." So when you really <laughs> radio, <laughs> so when you really take these, that's, that's who I thought about when he said that's that. the first thing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, radio. But he was real, so technically, never mm, mind. Continue, yeah, continue on that one. But but morning, <laughs> morning. It's radio. That movie's on my head now. So that movie's <laughs> horrible. Anyway, um, so when you take these things into, into perspective, does you really have black people saying like? That don't mean that uh you know Marvel fucks with black people just because they want to get your money. Well, clearly they want to get our money. If this movie was made by all niggas, they would still want to get your money. Yeah, you know, <laughs> clearly they want the money, but it's bigger than it simply being a, another interest in the Mar in, in the in the MCU. It's bigger than that. When you start seeing people like Kendrick or the cat that started the uh, the 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 the, uh, the GoFundMe in what's it, Detroit or something like that. Mm, no, dropping no. news on me. Right. He, he kicked off this huge GoFundMe thing to where celebrities are jumping in and doing their own thing. They're renting out theaters across the country so that inner city youth whose now, parents yeah. can't afford to see it I have seen can now see it, get the popcorn and, and enjoy yeah. the movie. I've been I've been hearing about been hearing celebrities about rent out. I didn't know there was a GoFundMe set up. What well, uh, the, the initial GoFundMe came from the dude, right? But I, was, yeah. I didn't know about that. But I was seeing celebrities have been renting right, out theaters, right. and so. The last time I seen this, one person did it. And I was Octavia Spencer when when she rented out a, a theater in L.A. for a hidden vi- for a hidden figures. Why does everybody want to call it hidden figures? Oh, shit! Okay, because they came out around the same time. Yeah, it did. But but overall, though, this movie has now created something that probably can't be duplicated until we probably get until, until we get Black Panther two. However, or until we get Static Shock, we ain't get no damn Static Shock. <laughs> but DC going to look, look a, and see that black dollar like, uh, do you think they want a cyborg movie? <laughs> like, no, nigga. We were all static. That's all we want from you. It's, it's a shift in, in the dynamic now to where, like, you know, one of the biggest things was, and Kev, you can attest to this, black films don't do well overseas. Right. Now, that's that's what the stigma was. Whether it's the content, you just can't understand, or whatever the case may be, they don't play well overseas. This movie this, is playing this, greatly overseas Yeah, this, this movie, like, just... Abolish that stigma. Yes, they can't say that black films don't play overseas. You can say some black films don't play overseas. Yeah, but they can't, yeah, but, they but can't you, say but, all black films. But even the ones that, that do okay, still can't top this right now. Right, you, you just can't. It's, it's funny because I watched an interview. I've been watching interviews about this crazy just to get their just to get their their feel on how they felt about the movie. And uh, I believe I was watching Chadwick Boseman, and he was like, when they went to South Korea. It was people coming up to them in their traditional garbs that was showing like mad respect. He said when we were out there, it felt like we were the Beatles. Yeah. That's big. Bro, you can get a dashiki in South Korea. <laughs> no, I don't think it was a dashiki. I think whatever traditional oh, you're about South they're, they're Korean, Korean right, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, they came up to you, them. Okay, I was about to say, like, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Ho Kim Long in a dashiki. <laughs> right, like, yeah, run me that. Let me get that. Like, that shit clean as fuck. <laughs> Hopefully, they're charging them them L.A. San Diego prices. <laughs> let me get that for two hots, bro. So <laughs> before before we actually like break into the movie, let me get you guys' initial reaction um, to the movie itself. I just feel about it. Though. <clears throat> I thought the movie was amazing. Uh, I said it on the noise. I'm glad that they didn't take the... Knowing what it was going to be, knowing what it was going to mean to the black community, I'm glad they didn't take that opportunity to force feed woke and, you know what I'm saying, cultural conscious. And I'm glad they didn't, they, they didn't take the opportunity to do that to people because I think that would have created a resentment, not just from white people, but from black people. Because now 
in a sense, you're faking it. Like you're you're forcing this this right, wokeness. Right. You know what I mean? I'm glad they didn't do that. Like the only thing that made this movie black was the rollout and the cast. You know what I mean? Other than that, it's, it's your movie. traditional yeah. Marvel movie. Yeah. It was yeah. like when I watched it, I didn't feel like I was watching a black movie. I thought you feel I was like watching, you was watching Roots. Exactly. I felt like I was watching a Marvel superhero that for the first time in my life, at least in my 29 years of living, I was able to relate yeah. to the superhero. Yeah. And that and that's one thing that we used to that we still say to people, you know, why are black people so happy about this movie? You know, I'm not even referencing the meme, but it's true shit. White kids can go anywhere mm-hmm. and look just like Superman, just like Batman. But then you put a black kid in the Superman, Batman, even Wolverine, put him in any of those co- any of those costumes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You see a black kid dressed as yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, like yeah. That as a joke. Yeah. But now we have that superhero to look forward to. So to have that relatability with 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 Black Panther is dope. I thought it was beautifully shot. Some of the CGI was a little shaky. Um, yeah, that's one of my my flaws about it. It's, it's, yeah. I thought the acting was great. I think everyone in this movie acted their ass off. Um, big up to fucking uh, Michael B. Jordan. Because I remember, yeah. and y'all remember I said it to you. I was like, well, he's the only nigga in Africa that ain't got, a, ain't got an accent. And then I remember that the actual character is from New York. So for them to take that spin and make him from Oakland, and then they low-key, if you peep, they made him Huey P. <laughs> they yep. made him Huey P. Newton low-key. It's crazy how the actual Black Panther Party kind of coincides with this movie in the, in the odd way that it does. Right. And I just thought that it, it to me, and I said this to both of y'all, but I'm gonna say it to the people so it's on record. To me, there was gonna be no greater superhero movie than um, The Dark Knight. I thought nothing could beat it. I thought nothing could top it. I, I thought Joker was the greatest villain in, in cinema. This literally just topped it for me. This is the to me to Carlos Sampson to Big Lowe's. This is the best superhero movie ever made. Kev, what you got? A lot of the same things Lowe said. Um, for me, though, personally, like, I don't even want to get on no, this this movie is the, the best thing ever, but it changed me a lot. And it changed me because it made me feel comfortable to be myself. Right. You know what I mean? I, I've learned when I'm 28 now, last year, this year, and probably next year, I've been learning a lot about myself. And this movie was like, you know, be yourself. Be good. You know what I mean? But I, I thought the movie was dope. Um my issue probably would have been some of the accents were a little bit like the old lady. I'm like she ain't even had no accent. I don't think. I think she was just yelling at folks. I, uh, she had she had a slight accent. The the old broad the, uh, when they was Damn. doing doing the whole <laughs> challenge and stuff. The, oh, she was I think she was wearing black. She was the only old broad in the movie. One of the one of the tribe leaders. Yeah, one of the tribe leaders. She didn't really have an accent. Some of the other accents were a little bit spotty, but I I chucked that up to they're supposed to be in different parts of the country. So that's maybe that's how their dialect is um i thought the movie taught something that was my biggest takeaway it taught something um acting was dope when the trailer first came or when i first found out about the movie and they said um michael b jordan was gonna be playing the villain i was like nah <laughs> and only because we have seen him play the good guy in everything that's how you know him. yeah you know him as the good guy right you know what i mean so i was like i don't really know how they're gonna do this but that that London scene, I was like, oh, okay, I see how he finna get down. Right, and and I was straight. Um, I thought how it tied into everything to the first to when to the first scene. I thought that was dope because I was like, uh, where are they going with this? Um, I thought it was dope. They even put a little emotional parts in there. Um, I thought it was cool. Um, overall, it was great. I love Lupita. Get her pregnant. That's a different story. My lord. Uh, <laughs> for me, I said on the show, I was like Lupita. Look like if Hershey's had like shea butter, yeah, or chocolate syrup, yeah. And, and I think like I was Lupita. telling you, Los, when oh, Lupita first came about when she was blowing up, everybody was like, oh, she's so beautiful. In my head, I'm like, man, y'all niggas tripping. When I see her in this movie, though, I was like, Lord have mercy. And now you can't unsee. Yeah, now exactly. Now I can't it's unsee. I seen a, a, a it was a photo shoot or something she did I think recently and I was looking like Lord. But then remember I told you it's because your first experience first, with yeah. Lupita was her as a slave. Yeah, exactly. No one exactly. looks good as a slave. Right, right, right. Um, I thought Angela Bassett was dope. Yes, I, I thought she I, did. I, I, I seen thought, a bad role. Yeah, from her. I think I think she did her thing. I thought the supporting cast did their thing. I think the supporting cast complemented the main cast very well. Um, I'm gonna second that. Uh, my overall reaction with the movie, I thought the movie was 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 great, it was fantastic. It was it. it like you guys, I, I left there feeling something. Like felt like we, as we as, as a culture, as a people, 
has have just been given something that will be in the, in the history books. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Not, no, go ahead, go ahead. Not only not only did we get a movie that even fans of the comic never thought they'd see, at least while they were alive. Not only did we get that, we also got a movie that that's breaking records left and right, debuted with over 200 million. When people were saying like, oh, they probably do like 90 over the weekend, right? Like everything that this movie had as far as like expectations met and exceeded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And not a single spat at not one theater across this nation. Ain't, ain't no racist brawls. No, like, the, the, impact, uh, the impact of the movie itself, I thought, was just fucking amazing. Now, it's crazy you say that because when I was in the theater, um, a girl's to my left and somebody was to my right. I think he, I think he was a white boy. He was either white or Hispanic. And when the movie was over and the credits are rolling, I hear him talking to his girl. He's like, that was the dopest movie I think I've ever seen. So for me to hear that, I'm like, okay, it's touching yes. people. You know what I yes. mean? And um, I thought the cast is fucking brilliant, man. Yeah. I loved Like, everybody did their thing to the T so well in this movie. They can't even make Black Panther be more of a secondary character. because In some points, yeah. In some points, because I thought Shuri is the coldest character in this movie. Like, the little sister. Yeah, yeah, she was so, dope. So she was dope. dope. Um... Angela Bassett as the queen. Come on, it's Queen Bassett. You, you, yeah. You know what I like? I like that this took this this movie took place like right after Civil War. Directly after Civil War. Like yeah. he went home and was like, okay. Yeah, they they picked up from Civil War. Yeah, like, I thought that was dope because I didn't know if they were going to do like a, a origin story type thing. I didn't know. I mean, in a sense, it kind of was, but not the traditional origin story. I was worried about that. I was like, is they going to do another fucking origin story? You know what I mean? But... Yeah, um, it's a, it's definitely an origin story, but it's like an origin slash. It's a different type. Coming to yourself, I guess. Yeah, it's a different type. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Out of all the Marvel movies, which I'm assuming you've seen them all, mm-hmm. to, to me, this movie and the first Avengers are the only one that really have replay value to me. Civil War 2. Oh, no. Uh, Iron Man. You like I, I know, the entire MCU? No, nah, because Iron, Iron, Iron Man 1 says mad replay yeah, value. Yeah, yeah I'll give, um, give you Iron Man 1. Thor Ragnarok is fantastic. I can watch this shit. I haven't seen it yet. It's funny because last night I was um, searching for shit to watch. And Guardians like, 1. You can, I, can replay Guardians I don't like anything. none of I don't like anything. I Guardians. love Guardians. Um, last night I was searching for stuff to watch everybody sleep. And Thor, I was like, oh, I can I can just watch this. I'm going to get a clear stream. It's, you know what I mean? I was like, I don't want to watch this shit. I want to watch Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, this one, First Avengers, <laughs> I'll give you the first Iron Man. Thor, Ragnarok, maybe I'm halfway in that one, have the most replay value. Uh, also, I say uh, Captain America. Civil War, War Civil for me. Civil War, definitely. But Civil War, for sure. The first Captain also has some legit replayability, too. Yeah, the first one I'm... Yeah, yeah. First one was on whatever. One, one I'm a big fan of. But, um... Do you remember when How Still I Got a Groove Back first came out? And everybody wanted to flock to Jamaica to find their true love? I, 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 yeah, I think I may have All heard right. my mother or something saying that. When I say the motherfuckers was really on Facebook and shit talking about, yo, so like Wakanda, like what's a, what's a flight to that looking like? like oh, no, a- like dead ass. If Wakanda was real, I was packing up. You couldn't wait to go. I was but going. It's people looking for Wakanda like for real. <laughs> like they think that they, there really is a Wakanda buried yeah. in the tree. Yeah. So. And speaking of Wakanda, I love just, the fact just that. Just wait, wait, wait. Before you, just to touch on what Lo said. Before, if, we, if we're going to play devil's advocate, what if there is? That'd be dope. What if I there is? Because like I mean, all the black people need to know first, though. Like, true, I do, but I'm just saying. <laughs> fair. I'm just saying for the simple fact that hey, we've never been to Africa, and there are places that are completely remote. People don't know about. I, I would like to believe that if it was a Wakanda, yeah, we probably would know. But what if there is? Just, Wakanda, just, just playing. Wakanda is definitely based off of an actual place. It has to be. Oh yeah, it has to be. You know what I'm saying? Actually, you know what? In the interview, it is. I'm sure it is. It is based on that. Um, Ryan Coogler said he when he went to Africa. Um, there is a place where it's like a. I don't even know what the fuck you would call it. It's not an island. It's 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 by itself, completely secluded by water, and it's remote. Mm-hmm. And there, he said that they're very. They're, they're doing that bad they because there's it's a poverty stricken country uh, or area and that's because when the colonizers tried to come they actually got their ass kicked right just si- similar to Haiti right Haiti's poor because Haiti won and they just got cut off from trade and everything he said this place was kind of based with Wakanda so there actually is a place like that it's just not high tech you go down there and you're gonna be in a worse situation than what you are I love the fact that Wakanda is practically its own character in this movie I the first time we we see Wakanda. It has the 
the most beautiful opening up to a kayak. They're flying the, the ship, whatever the fuck it is. And then you think they're flying towards the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the planes or whatnot. But then that shit just disintegrates into Wakanda. Yeah. So it's hiding in plain sight. Basically. Hands down, probably one of the coolest shots I've seen in the movie. It, it, literally, it literally gives Wakanda its own character. You know what, what's interesting about that is that the colonizers are so curious about every fucking thing. I'm surprised no one has just randomly taken that trip. Like, what's down? What's below them trees over there? Would you? The colonizers. I don't. I don't like going outside. No, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm taking. I'm taking away the call. I'm taking away all that shit as a person. Would you? If you see it's a bunch of trees, you're like, man, if it's a bunch of trees. You're not gonna go check. I'm not gonna go check. <laughs> and then again, do you have the capability? Well, we think about it because Michael B. He's able to walk right. Listen, somewhere you got to. That's because I think he knew where Wakanda was. Yeah, so then he's also Wakanda, right? So yeah, think about it. They're so curious. They were able to discover the twelve super Earths. They were able to discover uncharted islands. Like they go out looking for shit like this. You know what I mean? True. I, I get what you're saying, but I just feel like being at this this place was in Africa. They probably was like, man, we ain't even gonna fuck around with that. Nah, they think it's some money up, and they found them blood diamonds. That's true. You're right about that. So, so vibranium is a real thing. Trust me, Zach. See, <laughs> niggas didn't know what Sierra Leone was before. That's true. And they found them blood. That's diamonds, true. So they go looking for shit all the time. So that that's the only part of it that wouldn't seem completely real to me in the movie because someone would have found that shit by now. Yeah, especially somebody's going to go back by and now. Explain, by I now, and, off of a tree. Yeah, by what now in this age, about? I agree with you. Somebody would have found it by now. But if we're talking past, past, probably not. Yeah, past, past, definitely not. Yeah, probably not. Let's talk about um, was it Denai Guerrero? Is her name? I think that's how you say I it. I believe that's how you pronounce it. She, she plays the, uh, the lead security for... Uh, Before for we even get to her, one thing that I like about this movie is how they portray black women. Oh, black women is... I, I think that center. was probably the dopest thing about the movie because not only did it show them strong, they was beating the fuck out of people. Yes. Right. It was kicking. His whole army was... I, I just thought it was dope. I thought that was probably the dopest thing in the movie to me. I love the fact that, that, that his his army, his team of, of of warriors are all women. Yeah. That shit was dope to me. And then and then, you know, with them having the bald heads and shit, it represents their tribe and how like we don't need hair. You're right. You know I I, I just thought that was dope. I thought that was dope not only for me personally, but my girl thought that was dope to actually see black women represented in a positive light. You know what I mean? This movie broke see, all stereotypes yeah, with all yeah. black cast. I, I I thought it was dope. I, I thought it was crazy This dope, movie gave me gave gave us a villain I can actually sympathize with, like, dude, I, I get why you're doing what you're doing. Right. You're probably going about it the wrong way, but I totally get why you're right. doing what you're doing. I'm just waiting for the Bear Me in the Ocean shirt. That's all I need. <laughs> Hands down, the best line. I think, I, we, we go, yeah, it was. I, the best line of the best, The of, best right? closing line? Yeah, absolutely. Hands down. Absolutely. And he moved. Yeah, I think we should get there. We're going to get there. We'll get um, there. You said, de- pronounce her name. I'm going to say Denai Guerrero. There we go. She, I mean, she was raw in a couple episodes. I called her The Walking Dead. Walking Dead yeah. Oh, yeah. She so gets like, down in The Walking saw, Dead. And you know that? And that's what makes me excited because I just uh, talked to you about this the other day. And her name slips me. Forgive me, Queen, if you listen to the show. Um, but it's... Damn, I forgot the actress name that they're actually looking into for a storm. But seeing how they portray black women in Wakanda in uh, Black Panther, it kind of gets you excited to what they're going to do with Storm now. Yeah, like his storm went from like a, a C player in the X Men movies mm-hmm. to now. Now that Wakanda is such a big thing, Black Panther is such a big thing. They're gonna treat it great. They're gonna do something dope. Yeah, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Would you? Would you think of the opening scene when they're in Oakland? Even before we even get to o- Oakland, the the beginning People story. Listen, like God damn, why is all these? <laughs> before we get to this shit, yeah, but but even before Oakland, the opening uh, monologue where the where we assume it's T'Challa's father telling the story about Wakanda, and you literally get a crash course on Wakanda, right? And how the Black Panther came to be, and you go past that, and then we hit Oakland. I'm not gonna lie, in the. <laughs> In the opening scene where he was talking about it, it instantly made me think of the Diamonds Are Forever video. Me too. Blood I was thinking the same thing. I was like, did they get the same thing? I was thinking the same thing. No, but uh, but 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 by the time we get to Oakland, and Oakland is like Oakland, like great oh, yeah. Oakland. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, uh, Sterling, Sterling K. Brown plays. Uh, I didn't even know he was in this. Me, I was, Who the fuck is he when I saw him, I was like, what the fuck? But Sterling K. Brown, who killed his little scene he was in, um. Turns out to be the brother of T'Challa's father. 
Tyler's father. T'Challa. No, no, he, he's actually T'Challa's father's brother. Which makes him? T'Challa's uncle. T'Challa's uncle. Oh, I, I didn't hear that. I, I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> but, okay. but, but this movie opens up with so much deepness. It's like you just pretty much merch your brother out. For, well, wait, wait, we don't see him work him out. We believe that he took him back to Wakanda. No. No, 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 no. You still, you saw you just you, you just fall asleep, Jay. You know him for fall asleep in movies. We, we, we see we see them. Yeah, because what happened, he um he came, he told him, and then you know he had uh Sterling K. Brown had his his homeboy with him. Homeboy was like, nah, you know, he been trying to do X, Y, and Z. And Sterling K. Brown was gonna shoot. Or I wait, think, you know what? You're right, because that part did they they finally explained it with Michael part part Okay, okay, you're right. So you're when right. the movie first opens, we're led to believe that he just took him back to Wakanda. Right. And then we see the kids outside. We don't know that that kid just happens to be his son, who was Michael B. Mm-hmm. Jordan. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of assumed that because that little kid looked just like Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Not only that, though, in hindsight, I'm sitting there thinking we should have got a tip that that was his son because when uh, somebody knocked on, he said they knocked on the door and he hid everything. He looked out the window and he was looking at the kid like. And he had a look on his face like, you know, that's... It was just a different look on his face. Yeah. I thought it was dope that when they did knock on the door, he was like, better open it. They ain't gonna knock twice. Right. I thought that was dope. Y- yeah. I-, I, don't, I-, I don't think he would knock. Because he, uh, he, he knew right off bat who it was. Yeah. I thought that was dope. Um, since we're on Michael B. Jordan, let's, 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 let's take care of him real quick. Because, once again, Michael B. gave me the best fucking villain since Loki. I like Loki as a I like, villain. I like Loki. I, a yeah, I like villain. Loki a lot as a villain. But he is. But uh, uh, along the movies, Loki kind of he became a side character. But he, you know he has jokes and all type of shit. And, he, and he's he helps out Thor. He, he portrays Thor, but then he helps him out again. It's like okay, fine, that's your brother. I get that. Michael B. literally gave you anger, rage. The quest for revenge. And it was all justified. And it was all justified. Yeah. Like, dude, I totally get it why you're pissed off. I totally get it. To the point to where, leading up to his demise, like, I, I kind of don't want him to die, actually. I, for a second there, I, I didn't think he was. Me neither. But, like Lo said, that, that last line, he was like, yeah, no. Um, I thought Michael B., since I watched I, I thought he did a phenomenal job. Mm. Um. I had really high hopes for Michael B. after Creed. After I saw Creed and then I heard he's going to be the bad guy in this, I wasn't worried. But continue. The only reason I was worried is because, again, I'm, I'm used to seeing him yeah, I've as... Yeah, I've never seen the plot of a bad guy. Yeah, I'm used to seeing him as a good guy. Even when he was early in his career on the soap opera, he was still a good guy. He was a good kid. So, Hardball, all that shit. Yeah, so like I said, when that, that first... That, that London scene is when I was like, oh, he's he's with the shits. Right. He's all the way with the shits. Um, I, I liked him in this movie. What did, he, what did he say to the white lady? I'm going to take this off your hands real soon. <laughs> she was it's like, not for sale. Like, it's not for sale. Is that how you got it? <laughs> it was like, ooh. And, well, I think that was probably the first jab that, that this movie set up towards the colonizers. Right. And that's why I, I, I fuck with his character so much because he went in there and he just spoke the truth. He ain't do no extra shit. He wasn't trying to be all, you know, manic and all this other, even though Technically, he was crazy, but was he, he really was, crazy? No, but hear, hear me out. Hear me out. He was pushed to that point. Okay, he was pushed to the point that he became militant. He was pushed to the point to where he wanted to go back to his father's home country and just take it over, so he can take over the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? I thought the, the storyline was just great, and Michael B. acted his ass off in that line when he showed his arm with the kills on his arm. Like, oh. So that's what it is. So by the time you, you see him shirtless, pause, and his whole body, upper body, covered, yeah. I'm like, he's, he's he, caught, he got some bodies. He caught bodies. He that's caught what a they, few bodies. That's what they said he was doing in the military, just, but that's just what, catching bodies. That's what I thought was dope. He was like, you killed a few people? Yeah, I have. Me too. Whole lot. <laughs> he showed the arm. I'm like, that nigga killed a lot of people. He took the shirt off. That nigga killed, <laughs> lots of he killed a, a lot, lot of people. Of people. Um, I thought what they did with his storyline was dope. They... they <clears throat> They didn't make him seem like some some street nigga that just was out there murking shit. They made him militant. They made him very disciplined. They definitely made very him disciplined. Oak. <laughs> made oh, him I say yeah, but he was a oh, yeah. through and through. Oak. Oak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, as far as it making him making a discipline, it wasn't no no regular cat stumble upon some shit. Right. You know what I mean? They made him just. They made they made his storyline. Everything that he did was leading up to him going to a con. Right. I thought that was dope because you don't get that in any movie. 
You don't get that. So I thought that was real dope. Uh, also, what I thought was really dope, um, we, we get that first uh, challenge scene. With, uh, wait, 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 hold on. Are you going to the challenge between... Um, him, him and the bomb. Okay, before we get to that, I just want to go to one scene that established that this is the baddest motherfucker in the movie. Uh, what was it, Claw? Claw. Yeah. Claw was Wakanda as a country's biggest enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They hated, they hated that him. And you got Killmonger who's like, you can drop me off with Wakanda on the way. Like, nah, nah. As soon as he refused, he shot him. That showed you right there. Like, you thought Claw's bad. I love that yeah. part because <laughs> that did show that, that. established that like, this is the baddest motherfucker. In the and then movie. you, and then it, up until that point, you're watching it, and you're watching Claw kind of be the villain, be the guy. So you're like, okay, they've been to have run, and he was like, oh, when they took him, he took him out. I was like, oh, this. And then it officially became right. a, it, it officially became about Killmonger. Like, oh, yeah, there's your villain. Got you. All right. Um, t- and I, you know what? I thought Claw was cool, but I felt like yeah, it's time for him to go. I like Claw. I, I like Claw. I like Claw. I like Claw. I like Claw because he was a he, he's a traditional villain, but he's very I don't give a fuck about. To be real, one of them should have survived just to continue the Black Panther franchise. One of them should have survived. Because mm. because think about it, Black Panther isn't going to be set in Wakanda anymore. It's going to come to the states because now they're at the end of the movie. They just they agree to, to start service like and resources right, like right, that. Right, so right. now they're going to be back and forth between the states and Wakanda. You need you need a, a, a solid enemy on American soil. I I, I get that, and, and maybe see this this is this is this part is hard because maybe wow. it should have been Michael B. But at the same time, you kind of needed Michael B. to die too. And I I think with with Claw, it's going to make with him surviving. It'll make everything boring. It make it seem like traditional Marvel movies. Right. We still got to deal with Loki. You know right. what I mean? We, you still got to do deal with Thanos. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And those are people that we consistently see. So we get used to seeing them as villains. So I think with Claw, people wasn't necessarily used to seeing him. But had he stayed in that movie, eventually we'd be like, all right, man, here you go dealing with this nigga again. <laughs> so I, I, I can see why they like, killed him off. Um. All right. So <laughs> bless you. I, I wanted to uh, jump on the uh, the challenge. The challenge with Mbaku. Because, first of all, as T'Challa, the son of T'Chaka, T'Chaka he had that respect already. He's, he's, he's already Black Panther already. But when they, when, when they asked the other tribes who wanted to challenge them, nobody wanted to challenge them. But all of a sudden, here come the, the here come dogs. The, here come the cues. <laughs> right, basically the cues. <laughs> and M'Baku's character, another definite favorite character. He's, yeah. a, he, he's a dude who has... Pride, lots of it. Yo, I saw this funny ass meme earlier with Umbaku on it. <laughs> this chick said Umbaku could blow my Umbaku out <laughs> if he wanted to. I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> but, but continue. He comes out and he wants and he challenges. He wants that fade. He want he wants to run that fade real quick. Now the fade was great. I thought the actual fade I, was I thought so too. So dope. And then, like I said, looking at different videos, they really, I mean, they weren't on no mountaintop, but they were really in water. I thought that was dope. Also, the fact that they, they take away the Black Panther power so you can fight. I thought that was dope too. That was very dope. We're going we gonna to give you an even head up. That's an even fade right there. Mm-hmm. Now, with well, what I didn't quite understand, I, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't too sure where it would go, but as T'Challa and Mbaku fight, T'Challa's goons, Mbaku's goons, they have their spirits out and they're going they, they're gaining closer on them. So what's the actual end play if they all run upon it and they're all at the edge of the waterfall? Well the thing was death or yield. Right, between the two of them. Between the two of them. So they're closing they're they're kind of closing them in. So it's gonna be either you're gonna go over this mountain or you're gonna quit. Oh, oh yeah. I, I that's at least that's what I took from it. I guess I do see the confusion because what I took from it was they both I mean, they said straight up, like, because I think when Mbaku's people, they, they're the first ones that lined up around them. Yeah. And then that's when T'Challa had uh, the goon ladies, uh, the goon squad come down <laughs> the goon and line up on the other end. They basically was like, and it's funny because someone in there yelled out, they like, nah, you ain't going to jump my homie. <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically how they Cause came I thought, down. Yeah, because I thought that's, at first, that's what I thought was. And I was like, they about to jump my man? So it just, it, to me, I felt like that was just to build the suspense, but I felt like they were closing in because it's like, you getting closer, I'm getting closer. Right. You getting closer, I'm getting closer. I can see that too. I can see that too. Speaking of Mbaku, what I'm interested to see is because he's actually a, a key character in the comics. Yeah. He's supposed to be manic. I'm yeah. glad they didn't do that. I'm glad they didn't call him Man Ape, but that's that's his I mean, character. That's that's cool. Man Ape, huh? <laughs> no, that, he's not. Then that's where I, that's that's where I was going um, for the future. 
You know what I mean? Like you said, I, I'm interested to see what they do with his character. Because even though he, he wasn't in majority of the movie, he's a very key character in this whole grand And when, when he does appear, he, he makes a very strong presence. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, even when the scenes are... It, it, he's a super intimidating dude, too. Yeah. But it's funny as shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like when, he's, when he tells... Uh, Angela Bassett and them. The, I'll, no, he tells the uh, Ross, the uh, the cop, "I'll feed you to my children." And he <laughs> goes, like, uh, oh, "We're I'm just joking. Scared. We're vegetarians. We're vegetarians. Yeah. yeah, like you're a very serious person. Be doing all these little jokes, and these giggles <laughs> right, like, like that. You're three of me. <laughs> you can't or, tell or, me something or, like that. I'm thinking your kids are two of me. Or when, when they bring Shalom back from the dead, and then he's sitting there. Oh, are, are you done? <laughs> are you done? He's a you have a horrible African accent. Yeah, it sounded more British. <laughs> Technically, his was almost the same way as well. Honestly, it was. That's why I'm so, like, you know what, it's bad, I'm but Shane kind of sound like I'm just mimicking. <laughs> but great character. I think he's, he's an awesome character. I, I, I would love to see more of him. I didn't expect Forrest Whitaker to, to die, though. I did. I, I did, too. I did. I didn't, I, I didn't see that. But, well, correction. I, I had a feeling once T'Challa made him explain what actually happened. You know I, I, I knew he would die. What I didn't expect is the line from Michael B. Jordan. He was like, um, "I'm gonna kill you too, Uncle Uncle, yeah. Uncle, Uncle, Jay or Uncle James or something like that." So I'm like, "He already knew." Oh, no, I know you. He was like, "He already knew what was what." I didn't expect that line, but I knew he would die. Hmm. I think um, I, you know what's crazy. I don't think he actually knew. It, now that now, 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 now wait a minute, no, now, hold, 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 hear me out, hear me out before we get to your <laughs> disagreement. You ain't even let me finish my statement. <laughs> so. When you really look at it, everything about Killmonger was just built perfectly. Mm. Even the little scenes established that this dude don't give a fuck. What mm-hmm. he come, what he's coming for is what he feel he's owed. Right now, he didn't know that Uncle Jay uh, or whatever his name was to him. He didn't know that he double crossed his dad. Only thing he did was come home to a dead dad. And he didn't see Uncle Jay again until he got to Wakanda. Because think about it, he went back to Wakanda immediately right. with uh, T'Challa's father. And as soon as he said, he's not the reason your dad is dead. It's me. There was no, Uncle Jay, you turned on my dad? Or it was none of that. It was just like, I'll kill you too, Uncle Jay. And then murked him out and went right back to Chichala. Like, like that wasn't the, a the, big deal. The, <laughs> the, the reason I, I think he knew is because young Uncle Jay had a lazy eye. Z- the, the other, the grown Uncle Jay had a lazy so eye. No one else got a lazy no eye. No one else got a lazy eye, but this. No, I'm, I'm maybe not. They didn't show nobody so with a lazy my eye. Brainium but could fix everything. <laughs> but, but his eye. But that <laughs> fucking eye. <laughs> but, but the reason, uh, another reason why I thought he knew is because when he did go up there and he just had a dead dad, Uncle Jay wasn't there, and I have to believe that whatever his dad. Well, we know what his dad was trying to. What his dad was trying to do, and Uncle Jay, whatever. He must have seen Uncle Jay a lot. So his, for his dad to be there in the ground, me personally, if I'm if if I'm a little, if I'm a kid and I and I go upstairs and my dad's dead, I can only assume that it was somebody else that that knows him that that been up here, that had access, right? So sure. that's that's why I think he knew. Well, on, mm. only thing that goes against that is the fact that when he showed up to Wakanda, and remember when he walked in him with the hey auntie and everything, mm-hmm. he said straight to me, "I found my father. He had claws in his in his stomach." Right. He said right. claws of the Black Panther, and that he and he knew enough about Wakanda from what his father told him. Mm-hmm. So he knew exactly who killed his dad, especially when he saw the claws. Right. I, I knew. I knew he knew exactly who killed. Maybe he didn't know how the, the thing surrounding his dad's been double crossing. Maybe he didn't know that. But I had to. I have to believe that he knew. Uncle Jay has something to do with it. Nigga, you've been here this which, whole time. Now, all of a sudden, you're gone, and I'm going to a foster home. Something ain't right about that. Which brings me to probably one of the few moments in the movie I like Loki got emotional, because when they're doing the whole Black Panther setup after he, he has to re-drink, the, whatever he has to re-drink, and then he goes to that, that the land of, of, of the fallen Panthers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, And so, by the time they do it for Killmonger, Killmonger it goes right back to the apartment. Mm-hmm. And that scene does get you emotional, it because... Does. It furthermore proves why he's doing what he's doing. Right. But also, it's like, that's your last memory of your father. Right, right. It, it, I, it, I think it gets you emotional because of that, but as black men, I think you get you emotional because a lot of us don't didn't grow up with fathers. Right. Yeah, it gave you, Loki gave you a, a realistic um, version of what T'Challa went to. Right, right. right. And, and I think a lot, a lot of people, a lot of black men didn't grow up with fathers, and I think it gave a snapshot on how some black men may be feeling t- and that's just why they, they, they go out and do some of the things that they do. Right. So I think it gave a snapshot to the colonizers, to anybody watching, like, this 
shit here is real. This is this is what a lot of black men go through. So for me at least, that's what I was sitting there thinking like, okay, yeah, this this is a little emotional. Yeah. My yeah. allergies ain't flare up though because I'm a real nigga. Nah, nah, they, they, they flare up. I'm like, man, that's that's fucked up. Yeah, it was heavy. It was <laughs> but heavy. definitely heavy. Uh, I want to touch on two more things. We can wrap this thing up. Um, how you feel about Daniel Kalua and his character? I'll let Los go first. Somebody need to take a picture because <laughs> he has been, he's so quick to flip on niggas. Like so super quick, quick to flip on them on Like the from, from get out to this. He's just too quick to flip on <laughs> niggas. So he must still be in the sunken place. Uh, other than that, again, this movie, everything kind of works itself out. Like the details are so perfect because that was another low key justified thing. If you look at it, T'Challa, you're a Black Panther. You come from one of the greatest places on Earth. No one can beat you. You didn't bring this dude back that killed my people. The outsider. Right. You didn't bring this outsider back that ran off with our vibranium and did all this, all this, that, and the third. My introduction to this to kill monger is a body bag. With the body I've been trying <laughs> to get you to catch for years. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you want me to follow you as king, and then he has the rifle. He has the right to challenge for king. And the dude that I served before, and then and you both didn't bring back this dude, and then I find out this dude killed another Wakanda and didn't say shit to nobody. I'm not fucking with you. His his was a little bit justified. It was it was, it was, a, it was, it was another was, justified it, situation. It was a little justified. The only thing with him is I felt like he had too many ties, not necessarily to Black Panther, but he had too many ties to other people within those tribes to do something like that. Because you at that, that, that yeah, when, true. when I when I saw him betray Black Panther, to me it wasn't him just betraying Black Panther. It was him betraying Wakanda. Wakanda. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and I wasn't rocking with that. He led the he, he led the uh, the battle against the uh, the Goonets. Not to mention, oh, that's the, the second thing I want to get into. That final uh, battle scene that leads up to the uh, final uh, Panther Killmonger fight when he breaks out the rhinos and shit. Yeah, so, raw scene. Raw scene. Yeah, that was raw. Because when he blew that horn, I was like, I, I, I was like, what was I was like, is he calling reinforcement? I didn't expect them running. <laughs> Instantly reminded that they're in Africa. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> expect funny that. because when he when he when he hits the horn, I looked at Los and see if Los had the same look on our face. We were like, huh, who's he calling? I was like, he called more and, people. I, yeah, I thought more people was going to show. And, and, and whatever he was calling has some serious bass in his feet. <laughs> I was like, something's coming. And then there's a the killer part. When when the rhinos came, I was like, oh, he has a rhino. No, this nigga got three of them. But this is what's so raw about the goonettes. None of them flinched. They didn't. They, <laughs> they was, was like, oh, oh. like, what? Yeah, rhinos run. So <laughs> it, it was, was like, rhinos. It was, like, they was like that Kevin Hart stand up when his dad got beat. He was, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, this is what you're doing? So you're, you're, <laughs> you bring you're, rhinos? You bring rhinos out you're now. Bring, okay. ain't your line. <laughs> I also love the fact that when we first, we saw the first rhino earlier. That's the killer part. We saw the rhino. And, and thought nothing of it. Nothing. We, oh, this thing got a pair of rhinos. That's cool. What's up? I mean, it would be cool. But you were so, you were so enthralled in the battle. You're just like, what's going to happen next? Yes. You forgot about the ride. And I, I, I want to give kudos to Coogler for this. He, he made it to where the scenes weren't super predictable. And you, when you were in a scene, you, you felt like you were in that motherfucker. You right. was like, okay, what's about to happen? You right. know what I mean? I, I thought that was dope. I thought that was dope on the director's part because you don't get a lot of that in movies now. I will say with uh, Kalua's character where I was really – well, I, let me let me also say I really don't fuck with the character. I, I really do think at the end of the day, whether he was justified or not, he was a bitch for switching up on Wakanda that fast. Yeah. But where I think he's a pussy is you kind of see he may have been been one to switch up ever since uh, T'Challa's father was was in, was on the throne, and it seems like as soon as someone he thought that was a real threat to the throne came around, he instantly jumped with him. Hmm. I don't know if he necessarily wanted to always switch up because to me it just seemed like him and Black Panther were best friends. Yeah, they were. But if you look at some of the conversations they had, he would always say, "I talked to your father about this before." Like he always kept referencing. I his missed dad. a couple of that then. I missed. I, I missed some of that then. I was. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that that final battle, which, which was shot fantastic, it leads up to the. The fight with uh, Killmonger and, uh, and uh, Panther. Why didn't years. he just tell him, nigga, like, bro, I just found everything out yesterday. Can we talk about this for a second? Because he came in talking shit. Think about he it. did he, come in he talking shit. He wanted to tell him when, when he came in to address that he wanted to battle for the throne. He was trying to tell him what's good, but then Killmonger started talking shit. And he was like, nah, bet. We'll fight then. Cool. That's true, but I'm <laughs> saying... The, the, up to, 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 to their fight scene, their, their final scene, when they're down there in that little train thing, they really got to wait 
you know, till the train goes by in order to to suit up and kick ass again. During so why that, are we waiting? <laughs> during that time, he could have been like, bruh, I just found all this shit out. Shit. And then on top of that, I don't even rock with that shit. Can we? But but like you said, Killmonger. my daddy out <laughs> Killmonger well, probably. But then again, Kim, exactly. Killmonger, Killmonger not probably trying, was not trying, trying to hear it. Speaking of, he's not Speaking trying to hear it. Speaking of, you said he touched on that. I, I thought how they did this whole mystical world thing. I thought that was dope because Africa as a country is very spiritual. Right. I thought that was dope that they were able to tap into that and it wasn't corny. Right. I thought that was dope. Because we've seen stuff, like for instance, a bad, bad example is um, trans, one of the Transformers where Shia LaBeouf dies. That's a horrible, that's a horrible example. I, I don't know which one it was. It's, I don't remember which Child one it was. Dies in, in yeah, he dies and this thing goes to like robot heaven. He does the same little mystical shit and he appears. It's the one where, which one is this? Where they're trying to get the little thing, the little knife looking thing. I don't know which one it is. It might be the second or third one. I'm be real. It, it, I didn't I see think, them after the third. I think it might have been the third. It might have been. It's one of these. It's, it's either two or three. It's either two or three. Shia LaBeouf dies, and they kind of do this mystical land thing. I thought that was the worst shit ever. Wait, no. Was uh, Megan Fox in the second one? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, I didn't see This one was, so it was, it was a second one. It was a second one. one because Megan Fox was in that one. It was a second one. I thought I thought that was just really corny. So to see it kind of again with with Black Panther, I thought they did a good job making it to where it wasn't corny. It seemed authentic to me. I felt like you know what? If I took some of the shit he just took, I can probably go and see some dead shit. <laughs> I, I thought that was dope. Well, I mean, if, if you want to, if I want to, <laughs> um, <laughs> not really I'm not with the whole burying me alive thing. I'm not with that. So let's uh, let's close out with this. Um, now that we're here, movies out. Today's text was it's been out damn near week at this point. Where do we go from here? <clears throat> where, where where do you see the to, uh, the total run for Black Panther? It's gonna be a, it's, it's gonna be the number one movie for well, a, a couple of weeks <clears throat> now. From what I've been reading, he was always supposed to be the next big leader because they look at it. He's the the, the leader of the Avengers. It has to be like the head honcho. In That's why I said Iron Man's going to die in, in the film. <clears throat> yeah, Iron, Man, they, Iron they, Man's going to die. Right, and they've been trying to phase him out. So this is the perfect you know, replacement for it. And he comes from Wakanda with all the resources to do all of this shit. Because mm-hmm. think about it. Think about how much attention they put on Vibranium in the movie. And now they're about to go battle with the Infinity Stones. So now, now you got the most powerful metal on, in, in the world going against the most powerful whatever the fuck the Infinity Stones are in the galaxy. You know what I'm saying? It's about. I, I guarantee you, he's gonna fall into that Iron Man slot. It'd be like the um, new leader. I don't know if he necessarily f- go into the leader slot with well, the it's Avengers. Captain America's crew. Yeah, but, you know I, I, I just mean. yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. Um, I think they're probably gonna. I don't. I don't think Iron Man's gonna die in the the movie that comes out May Fourth. One of the two, though, for sure. Yeah, he's gonna die in the second one, and the reason being is a because we look at the contracts. Of Ch- or right. Chadwick Boseman's on a five movie deal, so he has. Down these, I think mean, I, mean, I believe it. If any, is his last official the yeah appearance in yeah. the MCU? Because um, I think Chadwick Boseman he did Civil War, Black Panther, both Avengers, and Black Panther two. His five his five movie yeah. deal. Um, I don't see him necessarily filling a, a slot like Iron Man. Um, I think they're going to probably try to put in a, a bigger character. We still got movies coming out in between the Infinity Wars. I think they're going to try to move a bigger character in. And well, if you look at the MCU, who's really a bigger character than Captain America and Iron Man? Well, we got to look at a lot of that because we honestly, if we're being completely honest, the Avengers that we have now are like the B team. And if we're being that, completely honest, they're the B team. Now that Disney has bought bought Fox, they now have access to the X Men. Yeah. Right, but we you know, we also don't have Logan anymore. Yeah, they're not gonna put they're not gonna mix the X Men and Avengers in the same universe. That's why that's not why right Storm, now. Storm the, is gonna be a standalone thing. Yeah, Storm that's is gonna be a standalone. I would not X-Men be surprised thing. though if they put the Fantastic Four somewhere in the vault. You want to know why they can't? Why? Because that horrible Fantastic Four with they're gonna redo Michael it. B. They're gonna they they third to. try. That's third try. That's their only option because that's a Sony. That's a, that's, that's a Sony movie. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, that's uh, Fox. That was Fox. Oh, that was Fox. That was Fox. Oh shit! I'm All talking. three of them. Fox. That was Fox. So I think they're gonna they're gonna redo that. Um, but I, honestly, I don't know where they should go. And honestly, I don't want to know. I don't want to know for the simple fact that I want to have that same feeling when I go see Black Panther two. DC, take notes, man. They're definitely gonna dive more into the um, into the characters that are more so unspoken, like. <clears throat> they've kind of just been kind of hit, trying to hit you with their big five or whoever it is. 
the the ones that people follow on Marvel the most, but they're gonna dive in more to what the comic book heads love. Um, low key, like when you look at how they did Luke Cage, I see a lot more of that happening. I see a lot more of them being like, okay, so who's somebody that we really rock with that we can make something real dope out of? Like if Luke Cage would have been a movie after Black Panther, that shit probably would have did great. Yeah, but at this point, I'd rather keep Luke Cage in the TV world. Oh yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. Definitely. I keep all of them in the TV world because that Defender shit was garbage. Hey, so, Defenders was whack. So, um, with that being said, you plan on seeing seeing Black Panther again? Yeah, I'm seeing it again. I want to take the kids see it. And then at the same time, man, that feeling that I had watching them, it felt good. Yeah, even I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I want to go and, and see if I can recapture that feeling. You will because see, see it for the second time. Just what it is is that we, we've seen it with a different pair of eyes, mm-hmm. right? You you know what's coming. But then you, you're bringing the kids or you're bringing one of the homies or whatever the case may be. You're viewing it again with somebody who, who hasn't seen it. So really their excitement about it. Yeah. It's getting you more excited. Yeah. I, I've, done, my I, mom, I've been watching movies with my mom and she hasn't seen it. I seen it. I see her get excited. I'd be like, yeah, that's dope. My, my mom <laughs> literally said it in the theater, like eyes open, mouth open, like, wow. Yeah. And it was my mom like, I want to see Black Panther. That look good. They're like, you know, it's a Marvel movie. Like, yeah. yeah it, I gotta, it look good. I take my aunt because she, she, she ain't said she want to see it, but I can tell she want to see it. She want to say it. I can. I, I, I only hope, and, I, and really, this is a slim hope because I, it's gonna happen regardless. This movie's gonna cross a billion dollars. I think that's gonna be tough. Uh, I'm you, it's gonna cross a billion because think about it. I think in the I next think, three weeks, there's nothing big coming out except. No, I think a few movies come out. Which, which Marvel Some, movies? This is how we can figure this out. Which Marvel movies cross the billion? Avengers one. No, that was globally or domestically? That was globally. Globally. Globally, yeah. Maybe they're, they're no, crossing the globally. globally. Domestically, I think they'll hit 320. 320. Yeah, I mean globally. Glo- if, you, if you say globally, yeah, I say it, that. It still, have an op- it still has an open in a few markets yet. Yeah. I, 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 okay, I can get with you globally. And we're, we're still in the first week. And like I said, there's still a lot of people that haven't seen it. Yeah, if, if Avengers 1 did a Billy, at least a Billy, then this is going to do a Billy. Let me ask you this. Because the next Marvel movie is the first Infin- Infinity. Infinity War, then How, Do you think that one's going to get close to what this one did? Oh, Infinity War's going to kill. That's what I'm thinking. If I Infinity think War's Infinity War's going to kill. Infinity War's going to be bigger, kill. low key, with, with this in mind. I, yeah, with, with this in mind. I think, to me, my top three so far, I think Infinity War is going to, the first one is going to make the um, some money. I think Black Panther, and then I think the next one probably made the most money was First Avengers. I think it's gonna be that top three at up to this point, and that's really all speculation because, like I said, there's nothing really in Black Panther's way for the next at least three weeks. Like even, I, I feel like something comes out in March. No, though. I'm telling you, the, the, the next oh my god thing. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Rampage, and no one is flocking to the theaters. I'm not Rampage. flocking, but I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna catch it. Oh, yeah, I'm a, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna catch it. But yeah, I think the, the next big budget thing is probably going to be Rampage. Besides that, there's I don't think there's no big hitters in March unless I'm a Cody. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and thank my uh, my guys who come in and rock with me, man, on this very special episode of Back to the Classics. If you have not seen Black Panther, I don't know why you listen to this damn podcast. You go out and see the shit. But if you have not seen it, go out and see it. It's a fantastic movie. Well worth your money. Get some of that culture up in you and see something different than what you're used to. It's a very different superhero movie. Different from Blank Man, Meter Man, all that shit. Oh, can I can I speak on that real quick before you close out all the way? When everyone kept saying, like, oh, everyone's talking about Black Panther's first black movie. What about these characters? If any of y'all can tell me that you aspired to be Blank Man <laughs> when that fucking movie came out. Did we... <laughs> We ain't even gonna say Black Man. If any of you inspired to be Meteor Man, Meteor Man, none of and y'all he had niggas, powers. None of y'all niggas aspire to be any of them. So it's like dead that shit. Enjoy the blackness. Enjoy the fact that we finally got a black superhero that we can be proud of. Yeah, damn. Yeah. yeah. Even wow. though I love Meteor Man and Black Man, it was <laughs> great fucking movies. But nobody, nobody was Black Man for Halloween for seriousness. You were being Black Man to be joking, to be funny. Lots of the people know where they can find you, bro. At Big Los UTC, uh, Big Los at Big Los IG on IG, hence the IG in the name, <laughs> uh, and of course at the Noise Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hollywood Kev underscore Hollywood Kev on Twitter and Instagram. Um, that's where I'm at. I don't fuck with Snap that much no more. It could burn your battery. That yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, we'll be back next week with a whole another uh, trip down memory lane. Of course, hopping back in the, the DeLorean. What, I forgot what, he, what the movie is next week. That's crazy. Uh, didn't you say Senseless? Nah. Is that next week or this week? It's supposed to be this week, but we don't miss. Shit, I don't know. I don't oh, know no, your show. I'm about to say, I don't really talk about a list. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. But, um, of course, thank you to my center folks for, for riding with me. I love you guys so much. Of course, the Facebook group, Back to Classics, a movie talk group, is up and popping. Jump on in there and join the conversation. Until then, I am Jay Alonzo. This is Back to Classics. See y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>